Yes, lads, welcome back to another rebuild on the channel today. So after the positive feedback on the Celta Vigo rebuild, I thought, you know what? We'll look at a team who didn't do so well in real life. Celta Vigo obviously finished 11th last season, so they didn't do that bad in hindsight. I thought the best team to do will be a team who finished third in their domestic league, which doesn't sound bad, but it's the Portuguese league. So obviously they finished below... Porto and Sporting Lisbon. Of course, it is Benfica. We're going to give ourselves a beard this time because I can't grow one in real life. That is absolute top-class banter. It was just banter. And I'm thinking we need to just change how this club's been, been run the last few years. I know they were decent in the Champions League against Liverpool, but it was still like the round of 16. I know it was quarter final to beat Ajax, didn't they? But still, it's not great, is it? It's not really that good. So we'll have a quick look at the description. I mean, that is such a poor description for such a big team. And crowned champions 37 times, I've won the domestic cup on 20, 26 occasions, I think. I can't actually see the number, my screen's small. But yeah, they've got a decent budget. The club worth nearly 300 million pounds. We'll get that up, obviously. And they've got a real ground, which is quite nice to see. So we'll sort out the parameters of the career mode. Uh, no financial takeovers. We'll do European competition the first season, because I think we're in the UCL. Of course we are, because we obviously we lost to Liverpool in real life and we'll play ultimate difficulty because we've got one game to play in this so we'll uh, we'll make sure we can can crack on with the difficulty and actually have a decent game rather than just an easy world class or something like that but obviously we'll see uh, the man himself walk into the press conference Mr H as the uh, I mean sounds like a poor man's joker to be fair but yeah look at that thick beard I'm so jealous I really am I'd love a beard like that but um, yeah We'll start off with the domestic cup. We're not even going to see what happens in that. I think we get knocked out in the semi-finals, but we'll see the budget before we before we kick off in its entirety. We've got a decent wage structure. Then obviously, £25 million to spend. We can actually improve the team quite extensively with that, I'd say. I mean, there's one man who I'm actually really, really interested in signing. So obviously, as you know, well, you don't know because I've not done many videos, but... I really like Di Maria. I think he's such an underrated gem. Honestly, he's literally like one of the best players of this generation. Because he won the Champions League. Uh, and he was the best player with Real, with Real Madrid when they won it against uh, Atletico. And uh, I just think the right winger, Rafa, he's a baller, but he looks better on the left. And I'm not a fan of Everton, even though I've just done a career mode with him. So I think we're going to go for Angel Di Maria. We're offering a big, a big sizable £25 million, £24 million actually. So he's in the final year of his contract. Let's see what they say. £28 million is what they want. It's a little bit more than we have, I guess. 25.2. Pochettino is not even going to be there at the end of the season. Agrees the fee. And that's a nice little fee agreed for a very good player. It will absolutely improve our side. So we'll just do the really contract with him as well. He's got five-star skills, of course. Let's open it. That's for too much money because I bet he's on a right whack-off amount of money at PSG. So, um, 115k a week, let's hope he doesn't ask for that because we really... We've got 114k, but I don't want to pay that for him. A crucial squad role, we want a three-year deal out of your mate because then you can retire. You're obviously 33, but he's still a baller. 85, right? He'd be the highest player in the team. 76k a week? Um, I think I'll accept it. He's a class player and we, we need him really for a big name. And a thumbnail, of course. So, um... Yeah, we've agreed a fee and a contract for Angel Di Maria. And hopefully he'll improve our team. So we'll have a quick look at that team, as aforementioned before I said that. So Rafa is going to get changed to a left midfielder. Got a few players on loan. Di Maria, though, looks like an absolute amazing signing as a right winger. Literally improves the team immediately. There's an 85 rating. And look how old the centre-backs are. I mean, there's some age in this team, but there is experience. And with that team we've got now... We'll simulate the first half of the season. So we will indeed return and see halfway through the season the checkpoint. We're second in the league. That's not too bad, really. Porto are on 28 points and we're four points above them. They are sixth, though. Look how tight that top seven is. That's absolutely nuts, that is. That is ridiculous. So uh, we'll have a look at the other cup, cup, cup competitions as well while we're here. So the Taco Portuguese, we actually got knocked out in the round of 16, which is a bit embarrassing. But we made it through that Champions League group against Barca and Bayern. That was the same group in real life, essentially. And Benfica finished third in that on four. No, sorry, they finished second in that, didn't they? Because they finished with Barcelona. And they finished second again, so that's not too bad. 
and Villarreal in the round of 16. So we will simulate to the end of the season now and we will see we remained in second place. And that's not really that good, is it? I mean, we should really be winning the team with the, uh, the league with the team we've got. Obviously, Porto miss out on Champions League football. They finish fourth. I think it's only top two in Portugal, to be fair. We do get Champions League football. Vitoria got Europa League. I think Porto get Conference League. So uh, not really great from us there. I'm very disappointed without a shadow of a doubt. Obviously, as you can see, we got knocked out in the round of 60. Sorry, the round one, not even round. Yeah, it's round of 16, basically, to Santa Clara, the team who adopt our badge. And we didn't make it past the round of 16. We lost 5-1 to Villarreal in aggregate. It's not a great first season. I think we've got a lot more we can do, though. So I'm not too worried in the grand scheme of things, but we really need to improve on that. We really, really do. So we'll see how the squads performed in the first full season we've had. The most capped player was Grimaldo, of course. Former Barcelona left-back. Very good performance by him, as you'd expect. Top scorer, Darwin Nunes with 24. 21 in the league. Three in the UCL. Not bad. Yaramchuk's got 13 goals, so he's replaced Gomez. Uh, sorry, Ramos for most of the season. And Di Maria's got nine and nine. That's not bad, really. I'm not actually upset with that. Di Maria's had a decent impact. And Rafa's the top assist, which is a recurring theme you're going to see throughout the throughout the, the episode. Sorry, so... Not a great first season. Hopefully we can uh, get a good response from the board. We're on a manager rating of 41. Let's hope we don't get sacked. Because that'll be absolutely devastating. Let's see what they're about to say about this very, very poor season. Because I can't believe we've got a 41 rating after that. We're hoping for a clearer commitment as well as better results from you. Everyone won't mind a tuition to a decision on your future and feel you deserve another season. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad. That's not... I don't, I, I'm not going to say that's an absolute defeat. It's just not great. So, um... It is what it is. We'll move straight into the second season and we need to see what sort of budget they've given us. That's the worrying thing. So 63 million. It's actually quite a lot of money for a team who finished second and not done anything else. I can't complain with that. We've got a uh, few changes to the team to make. A right back is one position we do need to change. As you can see on your screen, the man I want is Denzel Dumfries. A bit of a weird one. I used to love his card. On ultimate team we've agreed a massive fee for him to be fair but right back positions are always notoriously difficult to to improve on fifas and uh, let's see how much money he wants he's an 82 rated so he's not bad as a right back he's actually 83 rated so that's at least a little improvement i don't think he must he must have not played that much for into last season but yeah five year deal 57k a week you know what that's good that's good that's not bad for a european like caliber player so a european championship caliber player a world cup caliber player and a champions league caliber player i'll absolutely take that and we have signed denzel dumfries so a very nice sign there to improve the right back spot and after that we're going to sign a couple more players antonio blanco on a free agent obviously former real madrid 7k a week that's nothing that is absolutely nothing and then we've got one more signing obviously because the center backs are ancient as i said last season roger ibanez from roma sorry i got confused with the badge then. i don't know why it's not the real one. We're asking for uh, 25 and They want Di Maria. We're not swapping Di Maria. What a stupid deal that would be. 27 and a half million pounds. Let's see what they say with that. 31.8. Um, I'm not really sure about that. That's a lot of money. It's a hell of a lot of money. 33 million pound. We'll just accept it. I'm not I'm not arguing with them. It's not really worth it. We'll, we'll try and agree a contract with him as well. Because he, he looks like a baller. He really does. And we need a centre back to pair Lucas Verissimao. So he wants an important squad role. It's strange to say he's come from Rome he only wants an important one and not a crucial one. Four-year deal. We want five. We've got another four years left, but we still want five. We don't want to release because in 22 half K a week, I'll snap your hand off sunshine. That's an absolute signing, that is. He looks like a good player as well. He's young, he's got pace, he's got future stars. Not that that's relevant. And I think he'll be a good addition to the club. I really, really do. I'm hoping he is. It's a great signing. So I'll have a quick look at the team as well, just before we start the uh, second season off. Obviously, Dumfries comes in at right back. Ibanez and Verissimo is a central defensive partnership. Grimaldo is the left back. Di Maria remains on the right mid. Gedson, Fernandez, and Weigl make out the central midfield duo. Rafa on the left, and then Nunez and Ramos as the striking duo. So uh, very strong team. We'll see how we do at the full point of the season. We're going to do the full one now. And we're top of the league, and we've won it as well. Absolute tremendous performance from the boys. 83 points. We've pipped Porto. We've pipped Sporting Lisbon as well. That's what the top three in Portugal is meant to look like. Not Gil Vicente. 
finishing uh, above Porto. That was a very weird season. But yeah, not bad whatsoever. We have won the league indeed. We're going to have a look at the rest of the cup competitions as well. So the Champions League wasn't a bad one. We can't even see the Taco Portugal. I, don't, I think we lost in the final to that, to be fair. See how we did in the group stages. We got Barcelona again and we finished second again behind them. Above Bergamo, Calcio. We also beat PSG in the round of 16. Wow. That is a result and a half, that is, beating PSG. 2-0 away from home as well. That's a ridiculous result. Can't believe we've done that. Then we beat Dortmund in the quarterfinals as well. Let's see how far we can get in this. This is a tremendous run, to be honest. Oh. Well, that's depressing. So sad. I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, Inter ended up beating United anyway, so I guess that's a bit of recompense for us, but... I'm devastated. I don't know what to say. It's just... It, it, we've won the league, but yeah. We got absolutely annihilated in the Champions League, and that's why the music's a little bit sadder. But still, we won the league title. It's okay. It's okay. Let's be a little bit more positive and just be happy with a decent season. A decent league title victory as well. Verissimo and Grimaldo. And Di Maria actually played the most games as well. Di Maria looks like he had a good season, to be fair. Down to 81 rating now. He has been a great signing, to be fair. Nunez with a load of goals. That's an impressive amount. Top score in the league as well. Ramos has got a decent amount as well. Di Maria with 15. Gedchen Fernandes with 7. And Veris Verissimo and Rafa with four. Rafa's only got four assists, but he's got six. Sorry, goals, but he's only got he's got sixteen assists as well. So um, can't really complain about that. That's actually pretty good. Dra Mario with a seven assist as well. Not bad from him for a, a low amount of starts. And then Nunez with six assists to his name as well. So it's all round, you know, great season. Same as at Champions League, Liga Portuguesa winners as well. We need that one missing key ingredient. I, I wonder what the board will say. We've got fifty one manager rated. We're hoping for a clearer commitment. Are you actually joking? That is insane. That's such a stupid thing to say. I literally can't work them out. I really can't. So baffling, this board. But, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm not getting too upset. They've given us 66 million for season three. So I'm not, I'm not like, absolutely depressed. But I just this board, I just... There's something special. They really, really are. But with that 66 million pounds, we've got a few players in mind. It's quite a good, few good free agents. So if San Carrazzo, as you've just seen, a young central defender from Spain. It's looking at another one called Bruno Moreira. He's got a high, like, sort of potential. It's been revealed. Offer him a rotation squad role. He wants an important one. That's always a good sign when we've got an 82-rated centre-back on the books as the second choice. Well, second best centre-back. So he wants a 91 million pound release clause. Well, I think this guy could be quite good, in all fairness. Uh, no release clause. It's offering him, I don't know. 20k a week, something like that. I think that's a fair amount. A million pound sign on fee. That's a lot of sign on fee, but he's bound to accept with that. He does indeed. And they're both decently rated. One's 80, and this guy's 82 already. It's quite ridiculous. The final signing on this little bit, we've got another one to come anyway, but this bit is Luka Jovic. Obviously, former Benfica in real life. Didn't really get the best amount of game time at the club, but I think he's going to be a tremendous signing for us. And a. Uh, just a free transfer for 34k a week. Four-year deal, no release clause. He only wants 18k a week as well. His, his actual wages at Real Madrid are about 150k a week. Well, that's another tremendous signing. Either to go ahead, Ramos, in the starting lineup, or to just be second fiddle to, to Nunez and Ramos. Because you don't want to sell either of them. I'm not really bothered about selling players. I just like signing them. And then one final signing. We needed a midfielder. Kamavinga was the with the second choice. Vitinha was the original one because he plays for Villarreal in this career mode. And we offer 65.9 million pounds. Carlo says yes. And we agree. A monumental deal for the young French star, Eduardo Kamavinga. Doesn't look like he's had the most game time at Real Madrid. He's gone up four overalls, I think, or five from the first season. But that's not a lot, really, considering his actual ceiling on career mode. So we'll offer him a crucial squad role. This guy's going to replace Gedson Fernandez by the looks of it. Five-year deal, that looks... That looks tasty to me. And we'll offer him uh, a decent whack of money. He wants 66k a week. That's not bad from 115. And we've signed Eduardo Camavinga. That's our record signing in the bag straight away. And that's a very, very good replacement for what we need in the middle. Genshin Fernandez wasn't bad last season, but he wasn't the best. And we'll have a look at the team before we start the season. So Vlachia Dimos starts in goal. We've got Dumfries at Moreira. Captain Verissimo and Grimaldo as the defence. 
Di Maria is his last and final season as the right winger. But Camavinga and Weigl as a midfield two. Rafa on the left, as always, Mr. Consistent. And then we have Nunez and Jovic leading the line. So that's the team. And we're going to see how we do by the end of the season. So we'll skip straight to that. And we're actually in the final of the Champions League against Manchester City. This is going to be horrendous. They've got Bernardo and Ruben Diaz, obviously former Benfica players as well. We'll just do the players, like, attribute things while we're here. We've got Man City. This is going to be horrible. Jovic is sent off. Brilliant. I can't even take him out of the team because this little bit's broken, this little screen. Oh, dear, this game sometimes. I'll just go back and change it and see what I can do with this. Um, take him out for Ramos and take him off the bench as well. He can't change the bench either. And that's a pretty good team as far as I'm concerned. I do like that. We will simulate the game. I, I feel I don't. I want to play it, but I feel like I'm just going to sim this one. Hope for the best. And we finished three, three, five, four penalty shootout victory. Bernardo missed as well, and so did Pedri. They went one 0 up. We made it one one. They made it two one in the 65th minute, and then Camavinga scores in the 89th minute. Great signing. Sterling scores an extra time, and then Goncalo Ramos. Scores the equaliser. The penalties didn't go great to start off with. Yaram Trunk missed his. Bernardo missed one for them, though. And then we scored our remaining ones. Weigel with the winning penalty. That is wonderful. What an end to the season. Let's see how we're doing the rest of the leagues as well, because that is tremendous winning that Champions League against the Citizens. I don't think they've won one yet still on this save. I don't think they won the first one. And I definitely don't think they won the second one. I think that were into won the second year. So uh, that's absolutely fantastic, that is. Uh, obviously, no Haaland on this, but we did win the league as well. One point above our rivals, Porto. Six above Benfica. Uh, sorry, above Sporting, we are Benfica. And then four above Famalicao, Tony Martinez's as former team. So, decent season. A few losses more than I'd like, but we'll see the club stats as well. So, top appearances this season. Vlakia Dimos. Di Maria got 47 appearances. Dunia scored an absolute bagful. Di Maria with the second top scorer with 14 goals. What a way to bow out that is. Ramos got 13 as well. Look, he's retiring. That is so unfortunate. It makes me sad, that does. It's just a shame. But, you know, you, you've got to roll with the punches. He had a very good final season at the club. Jovic wasn't bad. Him and Ramos shared the, the starting strike partner with Nunez uh, being the leading man. So, not a bad season. Rafa got the top assists yet again. Third season in a row for him. Di Maria didn't do bad with six. And then clean sheets-wise, Vlekia Dimas, obviously... Along with Goncalo Ramos, obviously. He's a striker, it's different. But great season. And we'll see what the board have to say. We're hoping for a clear commitment. What are you on about, you absolute morons? Because you're all fucking morons. But, you know, I, I digress. I'm not going to get hung up on it. Very, very positive uh, season on the whole. And we'll move straight into the fourth season. We've got nearly £100 million to spend in the kitty and that is a lot of money in all fairness for a team like Benfica because well, they don't have the biggest TV rights deals out like the Premier League we've got a little a little change in the squad that we're going to have to make unfortunately Di Maria is retired so we need a new right midfielder I've only got a few players I'm actually interested in look at the bench as well that's a good bench in my opinion obviously we've got Lunion as well from uh, Real Madrid now I don't show all the signs because some of them are like irrelevant and this guy, this is a special player. He's, he's in his final year of his contract. £75 million we're going to offer. And Don Carlo accepts it. I mean, how is he still the manager after four years? He usually gets sacked after one. He's like 79 years old as well. I don't know. It's a good signing though anyway, Rodrigo. And um, I can't wait for him to have him in the team. Five-year deal, crucial squad role, real game face as well. Such a good signing. 115k a week with decent signing on bonuses as well. 15 goals, he gets £3 million in his deal. And that's it. as far as I'm concerned, that's a good bit of business. It really is. We needed a new right winger. That was all, the only position we really needed. And um, it's a very, very good bit of business. We're going to sign another player as well while we're here just to uh, fill up the squad a little bit. This guy looks like the regen of Messi. Lucas Duarte. I'm not sure why I didn't see him straight away because he'd have been a brilliant replacement for Di Maria. An Argentine winger for an Argentine winger. But, you know, Rodrigo's the guy I wanted. And th th this was the second best option. And hopefully, I mean, he can go and he can go and do things at the club. 30k a week, a million pounds signing on fee. That seems like a good bit of business to me. That's another player to add to the bench who, who could potentially, if we did more than five years in the future, push for the uh, starting winger role 
of Rafa when he eventually retires in like another 10 years. So we'll have a look at the team before we do start this season. Now, Vlakia Dimos starts in goal, as always. The back four of Dumfries, Verissimo as the captain, Marrera and Grimaldo remains unchanged from last season. The new right winger, Rodrigo, features. Weigl, Camavinga and Ramos make out the rest of the midfield, as we had last season. And then Nunez and Ramos, now fully fledged in the starting lineup, will take the reins in the amazing front two that we've got. And this is a wonderful team. Look at all the players we've got. Duarte makes the bench as well. And I can't wait to see how we do in the uh, first part of the season. So we are off top of the league, as you can see. Not quite running away with it. Sporting are sick. They're having a horror season. We're also in the semi-finals of the Taco Portuguesa against FC Porto. That should be a win, really. We're only three points ahead of him in the league, but we've got a much, much, much better team. And then we're also... In the Champions League round of 16, we finished top of the group. Only lost a game, and that was against uh, Trabs on Spore, unfortunately. They, that's our only defeat in the group, but that is a great little run. We've got Real Madrid in the round of 16, unfortunately, and we'll have to see how we get on in the round of 16 and the rest of the season. So we are going to go to the end of the season. We dropped to second. That is disappointing. We're still 16 points ahead of Sporting Lisbon, who really booked their ideas up in the second half of the season. Finished five points behind Porto. We dropped eight points on him in the second half of the season running. That is so disappointing. We did win the Taco Portuguese, though. We beat Sporting in the final and Benfica in the semis. That's not too bad. Quite nice to see. And um, I mean, that's just disappointing, though, before that. It's really disappointing. And obviously, in the Super Cup, we lost to uh, Napoli the Europa League winners that is disappointing as well but we did indeed win the Champions League for their second time we beat Real Betis 3-1 in the final we're doing so well Inter again won a European trophy and we'll see the squad numbers for the final uh, well not the final time sorry we've got another season Vlaki Dimos is the most played player as usual Ramos gets 31 goals he's the top scorer this year Nunez gets 27 Rodrigo gets 26 and Kamavinga gets a solid amount as well. Jovic was the backup striker. He had a decent season, to be fair. And Dumfries got six. Why is Everton playing more than Rafa? What is happening? This team is all over the place. But yeah, great performances from the two strikers and Rodrigo as usual. And then we'll um, have a look at the top assists as well. For the fourth year in a row, Rafa, the assist king, gets, gets zero goals. 18 assists. That is insane. Absolutely insane. And uh, Weigl and Kamavinga do a good job to at least prop him up the table. So the board this season, while well, we weren't able to achieve all our objectives, we believe the team delivered a satisfactory performance overall. That's satisfactory in the Champions League two years in a row. You guys are literally morons. I'm not playing the clip again, but they're morons. They really are. Very, very frustrating. But uh, we'll see the budget for the final season now. Season five, we are into it. And we've got 100, 117 million pounds to play with. We've got one position that we're really interested in changing. And unfortunately for Julian Weigel, he's the central midfield role, which he occupies. He's been a brilliant player for four seasons, but we need some new, some new players in there. And there's one man I wanted to sign before this, and we've actually got the chance to sign him. I've got enough money to sign him. Vitinha, the former Porto star. Now, obviously, a Villarreal in the La Liga. So he wouldn't mind coming to us, I don't think, in real life. And now I've got to deal with Unai Emery and his absolute garbage negotiation tactics. So um, you just keep saying 125 million, like we've actually got that. 123, mate, that's too much money. We haven't got that sort of money just sat there in the bank. We're not Man United or Man City. We'll offer him 160 million pounds. He has accepted it. That's a lot for a midfielder, but I feel like he'll help us complete like a treble or something like that. And he is an absolute baller in real life, Fettini. I love him as a player. Watching him is just fantastic. Saw him a couple of times uh, in the Portuguese Liga. It's just scrolling through um, like random links and you come up with like Porto links or random Liga NOS games. And he's, he's a brilliant player, he really is. I've seen some highlights of him as well. He's linked with a few big bigger teams. If he wants 32 and a half K, that's quite surprising. That's such a low amount of money. We'll accept it. I'm not bothered with that. I'll happily accept that one. That's a brilliant sign in Vitinha into the club. And we do agree the fee and then the wage as well. That is a wonderful sign in. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So this is the team we will have. Obviously the same defence and goalkeeper as the last three seasons. Nothing changes there. 
The midfield is all the same as well. Rafa still in the team at 32. Still got 93 pace. Well, then we've got that two, two man dynamic duo up front with Vitinha coming in as the central midfielder. So very, very strong team. And we'll see what we get up to later on in the season. So we are actually top of the league halfway through. Obviously, I like changing it halfway in full season. We've done two full season sims straight away and then we've done three half. Actually, five points clear of Braga at the moment, who have been nowhere near the top four in this save so far. Sporting and Porto are lagging behind. We're in the semi-finals of the Taco Portuguesa against fairly easy opponents, to be fair. Gil Vicente got the top four for two years in the first couple of seasons. Also in the UEFA Super Cup, we beat the European Cup winners. European Cup, Euro Cup, whatever it's called on FIFA. Inter Milan 4-0, very comfortable result that. And then we're actually finished second in our Champions League group behind Chelsea. And we're in the round of 16. That's a hard group, that is. Grimsby Town, what are they doing there? I am absolutely flabbergasted how they're there. Sound like Roy Keane. I literally can't believe how Grimsby Town are up there. But yeah, we need to beat BSC, young boys. We really, really do. And uh, we are going to simulate right to the end of the season now. We should win that game. Let's hope so. Two very boring minutes later. And we're in the UCL final for the third season in a row. We've got Liverpool this time. Darwin Nunez is new employers in real life. And this is a tremendously difficult opponent to get. Really difficult in the Everton career mode and the Fulham career mode. We actually beat Dortmund after losing the second leg. We still went through after a 2-0 win at the Signal Iduna Park. So not bad. They'll beat Paris Saint-Germain on penalties. We've really squeaked through as Liverpool absolutely dominated. Dumonte Calcio on uh, on aggregate. And we've got, as I say, Liverpool. So we are going to play this game. It's the final game of the career. We see the Eusebio Tifa. What a beautiful man he was. What a player as well. We'll have a look at the team as well before we kick off. And um, we've got a very strong team. 99, Vlakia Dimos. I can't believe he's number 99. Starts in goal. The right back is Dumfries. The defence is Moreira and Verasimo and Grimaldo. The midfield four is Rodrigo, Vitinha, Camavinga and Rafa. And Nunez, the Liverpool man. And Ramos, number 88, lead the line. Very, very strong team. And that is the team which is going to win the Champions League. Wonderful team. We're absolutely tremendous. So we'll start with the first highlight of the game in the 21st minute. Nunez is played through. He's beat the offside trap, which Ben White set. He's got Alisson to beat on goal. And he fires it past him. I'm not a fan of this camera angle, by the way. It's a great finish by big boy Darwin. And he celebrates against his current real-life employers to put us 1-0 ahead. So we'll restart again in the 41st minute. Diaz, the former Porto man, bends it round Vlachia Dimas, who tips it into his own net. An absolute nugget. Forgets how to use his hands again. And we're 1-1 going into the first half. In the 70th minute, Rafa gets the ball. Nunez is through for a final time. And Darwin Nunez makes it 2-1. He's been tremendous. This card, if it were an ultimate team card, would be absolutely broken. Feels like his team at season. And that was the final goal. And we win the Champions League three seasons in a row. That is tremendous. We've literally broken records with this team. Di Maria was probably the second best player in the save. But that man himself, Darwin Nunez, was absolutely the best player in the save. Di Maria's return bought glory. And the captain, the now captain, anyway, Verissimo, ready to lift the Champions League in front of the fans. And he does. That is tremendous. His commentary team's doing my absolute nothing, by the way. I apologise for not turning them off yet. I really need to. But we do win the Champions League for the third season in a row. That is a tremendous result. And we'll have a look at the final table in the Liga Portugal. We've won the league comfortably there. 22 points above third place and 13 points above Porto. We've only lost two games all season. We also win the Taco Portugal. 1-0 against Sporting yet again. Two seasons in a row we beat them in the final. Obviously, we beat Inter in the Super Cup as well. So, we've won, a, we've won a quadruple. We've won every trophy we can do available to us. Beat Liverpool 2 on in the Champions League final. Darwin Nunez. I've run out of superlatives to talk about that, man. He's absolutely tremendous. But I can't believe that we've done that in such a short amount of time. Win three Champions League with Benfica. And it's just, just it's how it goes sometimes. I struggled to win anything with Celta Vigo for the first three years. Or anything major. And then with these, I've won I've won all we need to win. So uh, the top scorer for, for the final time is Darwin Nunez with 32 goals. Rodrigo hits 20. 
Ramos and Jovic hit 10 apiece. Jovic, Jovic has been a good signing, to be fair. Kamavinga hit 17. Rodrigo with a good season, as I say. And then Vitinha hits nine, along with Grimaldo, who hits four, and Dumfries with three. That's tremendous, that. Rafa's got one, bless him. And we'll look at the top assists as well while we're here. And I think you already know the top assister. For the fifth season in a row, Rafa is the top assister. Vitinha's got 16. Great season from Camavinga's got seven. Nunez has got six. Grimaldo's got five. And Rodrigo's got three. Why, Vlaki Dimos has actually got one as well. Good for him. I'm really happy with that. That is such a good season. Team's ridiculous. It really is. I, I just can't believe we've done that well. Di Maria's replacement, Rodrigo. Absolutely tremendous. Someone's got a bit of win then. Yeah, absolutely tremendous. Very, very good replacement for him. Not quite as good, but he did score more goals. So as you can see, treble tops for SL Benfica. Four including the main trophy. How has Vlahovic got the player of the tournament? Oh my God, Nunez was the top scorer. This is some European bias if I've ever seen it. But yeah, player of the tournament as well for the Europa League is someone who's European. And look at that. Benfica in the Champions League. So guys, I really appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next rebuild we've got on the channel coming very, very soon. Cheers, guys.